at 6.07. Is there any adjustments to the agenda? We are going to have to wait on celebration of learning. There's soccer. So <laughs> we lost out to soccer today. Yes, I can imagine. So the sixth graders will come in. Okay. They all volunteered and it wasn't until their parents. Uh, well, that's exciting that they were um, interested in coming and yeah. doing celebration with us, but I'm happy that we have a good soccer um, yes. program going. Right. Okay. Um, is there any other adjustments to the agenda? Okay. Oh, look at the top of the mountain. That's so pretty. The sun just hitting it. It's great. This is a great view. All right, consent agenda. Approve the minutes from Monday, September 9th, uh, 2024, and approve the minutes of Saturday, September 28th, 2024, for our special retreat. Um, I did note that uh, the minutes are a little misleading. Um, under 9.2, uh, 9.2, it says that there's the Stockbridge Bridge project through VTrans and possible resolution. And the next line indicates that mayor moved to hold an executive session at the end of the meeting. Um, in the original meeting agenda, um, executive session was number 10 after number 9, and so that motion is actually to move the executive session just to the end of the agenda. Um, I just don't feel that it clearly shows it there and it implicates that uh, we went into executive session over 9.2, which we did not. So if we could just um, make that those corrections, I would be happy. Yeah, I think that's important. And uh, I move that we put the minutes of that uh, change. Okay. Uh, our amendment and putting that information about executive session towards where it belongs. Okay. Second. All right, so the minutes have been approved for the uh, clarification that we just discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All right, and the approved minutes of Saturday, September 28th, which is our special retreat. I shall move. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All right, um, we're motion to approve the minutes of Saturday, September 28th. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, uh, we move on to public comment. Do we have any public? Hello, good evening. Hi. Hi. Hi there, Lindsay Ray Sylvia, a member of the Stockbridge community, and uh, just hoping to follow up on our standing uh, farm slash forest to school topic. I know we uh, last last month had just decided that this would be um, kind of a, a, a chance to follow up and ensure the forward progression of the farm and forest to school movement for RSUD. And just wanted to provide um, an update that a few families from the Stockbridge campus have been in contact through Lindy with uh, Mary Shell, uh, the uh, community coordinator for the SU. So um, going forward, we'd like to have some standing meetings uh, along with Pat and JC as the RSUD uh, task force, is that what we're calling it? Uh, point of contact. Don't want to call it a task force, it's not a task force, it's a community group. Yeah, community group. Yeah, community group, so great. That's wonderful. And um, we definitely uh, want to go ahead and put that on the agenda as something to, to be able to check in with you guys. So mm -hmm. I will, uh, in the future, make it an agenda item so that it doesn't uh, have to be just during public comment. So that's great. I'm excited and can't wait to see uh, what, what great things you guys are going to do. Very well. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Do we have any other um, public comment? Or just the people that are on the screen that I see on the call? There's nobody else, is there? That's it. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, if there's no further public comment, we're going to move on to board comment. 
Um, I just wanted to comment uh, publicly to that we, the board really wants to encourage Rochester voters to uh, go out and vote yes to the town acquiring our um, high school uh, building. So I just wanted to put that out publicly that that is something that our board wholeheartedly supports. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, great. There's no other um, board comment. We will move on to the superintendent's report. Uh, so you have my report in hand. The originally they had said that the commission on the future of Pu Vermont public education was going to meet the first Monday of the month. So I had listed October 7th as a potential meeting that has now been changed to Monday, October uh, 21st. Um, and so I did update that on the full board uh, tab in, in regards to that Excel spreadsheet. I encourage the board to continue to just also visit the AOE website. We don't always get notifications if they decided they're going to change um, those meetings. So, uh, but I know Bill was able to attend the finance committee last week and we had two board members planning to attend today if that commission meeting had been held. And I think they're hoping to, it sounds like their schedule works for those two board members to attend on the 21st as well. Um, otherwise, you know, we're starting to roll out data reports um, across the SU specific to our spring VT cap uh, ELA and math data, and also um, in regards to track my progress, Principal Stetson's going to go over all that with you here in a minute. The um, what I would say is what I feel good about and encouraged about is that as a supervisory union, um, I would say over 80% of our cohorts SU wider are performing above the state average. Um, in regards to proficiency, I would say overall as a state, though, I feel I'm a bit troubled by the fact that we actually saw some regression as a state um, in regards to those test scores. So um, so stay tuned in regards to at the full board meeting uh, coming up. Um, we're going to have a breakdown across the SU in regards to how our districts did and so that the boards can start to see how we're going to be utilizing this data also as a supervisory union uh, to inform some you know just curricular um, approaches and also um, areas where we're finding that we're having some great success try to look at how we could possibly turn some of that into some teacher leadership to continue to um, support you know this idea of an integrated system across all of our districts and then finally, uh, I'm joining you virtually tonight because as soon as we end this meeting, I still have to pack and then hit the road uh, tomorrow morning around 5 a.m. for a 14 hour trip out to the Quarter Horse Congress that I'm really excited to be attending. And I appreciate the board support and allowing me to do so. You're in really good hands with all your administrators. Um, and of course, Chief Academic Officer uh, Adams will be filling in in my role as the acting superintendent while I'm gone. But of course, I'm always just a phone call away. Excellent. Well, thank you. And I do hope you enjoy your trip and get some good relaxation and some recharge and, and uh, come back with a spring in your step. Thanks, Amy. And, uh, you know, if you get bored and you check out the website, if you look at age geldings and mayors, there's a live link and you can watch, watch me show. Right, great. That's awesome. We're going to stream it. It's going to be our celebration morning. There you go. <laughs> Excellent. Does anybody have any um, questions, comments for our uh, superintendent on this report? Um, bring back a blue ribbon or two. That's that's the hope. Patrick? <clears throat> no, yeah, I was just curious. You would mention a regression in the state testing scores. And I was just curious what you think the what you think the uh, the reason for that is. Yeah, I you know, I think for one, they're still trying to dial in like this new statewide assessment, Patrick, in regards to cut scores. Um, mm -hmm. And so they're still, you know, looking at scale score around what's proficient. Um, you know, I would say, you know, as a state, we we can, you know, just like we do here as a state, I think we're continuing to combat a teacher workforce shortage. So I think that that's hard. 
Um, and so, you know, I think making sure we have qualified individuals in front of kids that are well trained and also not stretched too thin continues to play out across the state as well. I mean, you know, yeah. in general, workforce shortages is um, impacting lots of different sectors, but certainly um, education as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There's no further questions for our superintendent. We'll move on to uh, principal report and the spring 2024 BCAP data literacy map and fall 2024 track my progress. Uh, so we'll start with the principal's report first, and then we'll work our way through all the academic data that we have tonight. Uh, you have my report in front of you. We are up and running, which is great. We're really starting to dive into instructional uh, groups. We spend most of the six weeks really focusing on routines and expectations. So it's nice to start to switch gears a little bit. Um, things that I'll highlight or add to the report is on October 28th, we're gonna have our first community conversation. Um, and that is with all families that'll be in Rochester. And it's um, specific to like our social emotional learning systems as, and behavior and just how we can wrap around and support parents, but also so everybody has a better understanding of all the things, right? Like if your kid says, I earned a hand at school, well, when you were in school, that might've been like a high five, but really it's a recognition um, of how a student was being respectful, responsible, or ready to learn. So just, uh, really spelling that out for folks and what interventions are available um, that we utilize. And then an opportunity for some small groups that are facilitated to just have common conversations around that. And, and if it's successful, it might turn into a little bit of a series. So that's on the, on the 28th. Um, and then some other things I'll highlight is some community partnerships. So we're working actually tomorrow. Uh, Lindsay and her crew from the U.S. Forest Service come to Rochester uh, to really focus on fire, forest fire safety and the ecology of a forest and what happens to it during a forest fire. Cool. Um, so every age group will get to rotate through that. That's tomorrow in Rochester and Thursday in Stockbridge. We've also formed some partnerships with the Pittsfield Library and the Rochester Library where our preschool kiddos are going to visit. So they usually go for a craft and a story and just get to in that way and then um, as well as in partnerships starbase is happening again this year we haven't done that since before covid yes right um and then and that's fourth fifth and sixth or it will just be fifth and sixth yeah. yep great um and then some opportunities with um vermont parks there's a group that went to Gifford woods on friday as well so those are highlights i'll take questions on just the report and then we can jump to that Okay. Any questions? Any questions for Lindy on her report? I think it all sounds very exciting and really wonderful that there's so much diverse things that opportunities that kids are having to be able to learn. Great. Um, so now we'll move to academics. We're going to start with track my progress first because that's what printed first, and then I added for you guys the three additional pages are the VCAP scores. Okay. So um, the first page is just kind of a summary to explain like what percentile scores mean, what colors when you look at that, okay, and then uh, as well as scale scores and where that leaves us. So that's kind of overall for testing windows. Um, if you flip to page two, so we're going to scroll down, how then you'll see our map data in front of you for the fall, kind of some celebrations. Uh, one is that like grades K through five, our average scale score is higher uh, than the fall expectation statewide. So if you look at the last, it's highlighted, mm -hmm. where it says fall 2024 average scale score, and then our baseline uh, from the state we'll see that we are above oh great yeah k through five so we're really starting to take off um with our math instruction other celebrations that you may not be able to see when we look at the data from last fall to this fall our rate of progress is meeting the national average 
which means we're moving at the right rate. We do have um, grades third, fourth, and fifth grade that are progressing uh, one tenth faster than the math, national average. So not quite double the rate, but we're moving there, which is great. Um, and then just some focal points that have come out of this data, and we're taking more of a deep dive tomorrow, actually, in our data team meeting, uh, is really focusing on number and operations in base 10. And then for older kids, it's expressions and equations. So understanding how to solve multi-step expressions or equations, but also um, what's missing is the infamous mm -hmm. one that they're struggling to plug in. Um, so that's a that's kind of our math the data in a nutshell. Any questions about that math data? No. no. Questions? I'll oh, flip to page three, uh, which talks about our English language arts. Um, so I would say overall, just as a celebration, that in the spring, 40% of our students were proficient or above in um, English language arts. In the fall, we're at 44%, so a little bit of growth over summer, which is always nice. Um, and no summer slides, so just no, see, which is great. Uh, from fall 2023 to fall 2024, our um, grade three progressed at almost double the national average rate, which was great uh, to see. That's the first time probably since we've tested this age group that we've really seen so few in the red and the yellow. So it's great celebration. Um, kind of some focal points from now to January really to be to go after that population that's in the yellow and move that group that's up in the red. About 45% of that whole group of the 20, 45% of the 29% in the yellow uh, scored right in the 55th to 59th percentile, which is right on the right on the edge of meeting uh, proficiency. And 15% of them scored from between the 48th percentile and the 54th percentile. So we've got a group that's really close. So right, they're dialing it in. They're dialing it in, um, and we really want to make that push. And then. Um, I would say areas to focus on are reading and understanding informational texts mm -hmm. and not just in an open ended way, right? Like a very explicit way, not just tell me what you, what you learned, but please identify the sentence that best summarizes this whole article um, that they have to read, which is sometimes two to three paragraphs, depending on the age group. And then knowledge of language, which is they're given a sentence. And they have to listen to the sentence or read the sentence and then pick uh, like who would be speaking to them in that sentence. Or if a teacher, if you were speaking with your teacher, how would you say this? Which is very, uh, it's going to take some time to figure out if that's definitely a community oriented like conversation. And the person tickets, well, of course I would speak this way, but it's not necessarily the most grammatically correct way right, to hear that. So, that um, is definitely an interesting one. To and that's go back to. What, what age group is that? That's all age that's groups all that are struggling with that, right? Um, so that's where we're headed. Well, we're not where we want to be with our fall baseline. You will see if you look at this top chart, right, from um, fall 2023 average skill score to fall 2024, we're seeing, we're seeing some growth. It's just not quite as much <laughs> as what the state average was. So waste yeah. Questions about English language arts. Questions about track my progress data, and then I'll explain the recap because it's very different. Uh, this is track my progress is what well, is how long have we been doing it? This is year three. Year three, okay. Yeah, of using this as a screener. Year two. Where kindergartners start taking it in the fall. Not so the first year we did it, kindergartners didn't take it until January. And this data is tracking the same cohort. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It does track the same cohort. Um, and just informs our instructional practices. I wouldn't say there were 
most kiddos are right where we're seeing them perform mm -hmm. in class. So, great. Other questions about tracking progress? No? So then in, you'll see on page four, this is kind of the letter or summary. Of, yeah, it looks um, like the, the SPAC data is not in my, uh, sorry. It's not in the packet, Jeannie. I did print it for folks. All right, good. I'm glad but that this uh, happened. Yeah, I noticed it's yeah, not. Um, it's at the bottom of what Calvin's got presented, so we'll be able to show it virtually to you. I don't know why I didn't print it. But, um, so you kind of see a summary of it, um, and then a letter that went home. So all these scores went home, like, in the third week of September to families. And then you have in front of you what's called, first is the Family Interpretation Guide, just explaining when they get their student report, what does that, I mean, they didn't what does it right? Yeah. What, are, what are you looking at? And there's some key things that these tell us, our performance level, but it also breaks it down by standards, so we know whether a kiddo um, maybe scored high in that standard, met the standard, or was low, so like it breaks it out more than just math. It, excuse me, it also gives previous years. So if a kiddo took it, even though this was only year two of using um, these, it kind of gives you a score, like this is what we did last, this is what your kiddo did last year, and this is where they scored this year. So you get to see a year-to-year -year comparison, which is nice. And then it does break down, um, explains there's a writing prompt that kids are given. So it breaks down what that score was on the rubric. And then it breaks down our English language arts um, score into two categories, reading and listening, and then written language. So that's kind of just so we know this goes home for parents so they understand how to read it. Because it's a lot of English, right? <laughs> if you go to the next page, it should be your English language arts. Okay. Um, so you'll see it connected to goal one about uh, seeding the proficient benchmark. Okay, so you in the purple diamond. Okay, um, like so. If we look at grade three, they scored as an average at seventeen forty-eight. So they um, kind of met or were just above the proficiency mark as a mm -hmm. um, cohort or their average. Okay, our grade four was lower as their scale score was seventeen eighteen. Uh, grade five was seventeen twenty. Okay. And then um, grade six was 1771. When we scroll down, it does break it out for you by cohort. So if you go to page six, in the right order. Yep. Keep scrolling. Yes, that's scroll that. There you go. Great. Thank you. Um, what you will see is our grade three was close to like that's the percentage of students. Um, who scored proficient or above in our grade three cohort. So we were at 40% and the rest of the state was at 48. Grade four was 21%. The rest of the state was 54%. Grade five was at 30%. The rest of the state was at 50%. And then our grade six was 65% and the rest of the state was 56%. What I will say that we've noticed as a trend is students who are with us from start to finish, about 80 to 85 percent of those students meet or exceed mm -hmm. the proficiency by sixth grade. So they may not meet it in grade three or four or five, but by the time they leave us, they are leaving that state test at that grade. So, um, and that's anybody that's been with us from beginning to end. The other thing that I'll share about our group what would have been last year's grade four cohort, now our grade five cohort, right? Like throwing mm -hmm. everybody up in your brain. Yep. Um, is those are our, um, where the most condensed version of our targeted plans are and, and our um, students who receive services through IPs. Mm -hmm. So some of it makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Some of it could be higher. <laughs> are the, the, um, 
is, is there a larger number of kids who are recently joined um, in the fourth and fifth? There are we have quite a few new enrollments in fourth and fifth last year. Yes. So they also came in with us. Uh, third grade last year, we had several as well. So three, four, and five, we had some new enrollments last year. Now this will be, uh, we retained everybody, which is great. They stayed. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that group progresses after being with us for more than one year, or not even really a full year. Questions about English language arts? Okay. Headed to math. We're seeing that third grade group be right at that like proficiency scale score. Right at the 750, they hit that mark. That's what that line is. Mm -hmm. What the proficiency skill score was. Um, and they jumped um, last two years ago, third graders. Uh, so our fourth grade was at 1710 average skill score. Our fifth grade was at 1689. And then our sixth grade was above the state average again at 1756. So again, we're seeing some similar data points with that sixth graders. Our third grade overall, the state average was 36% of uh, third graders met our seated proficiency. 40% <coughs> of ours did too. Uh, grade four was very similar to English language arts where 21% met um, or exceeded and 30% was the state average. Uh, Fifth grade math, we see 36% of the state met or exceeded proficiency and 30% did in our set. And then you will see 53% of our uh, Rochester staff, which kids met or exceeded uh, proficiency in math and 47% um, did statewide. Yep. Questions about that? Great reporting, though. Right there. It's getting there. Each year's a little clearer. Um, and then science-wise, um, fifth grade. So that's a, they do that test in fifth grade and eighth grade. So we only get one oh, snapshot. Yeah. Okay. Um, so our average skill score was seventeen twenty-five, and this. State average, uh, the proficiency scale score was 1750. The state average scale score uh, for last year was 1739. So kind of right in there, not quite at the proficiency level. Um, and you'll see 24% of our students uh, scored proficient. That is the state summit of testing. The only thing I'll add that's different from last grade's test scores to two students test scores ago is they didn't, the first year we launched with BGAP, they didn't know how to assess the writing prompt because there were so many technological difficulties. Okay. Meaning when we did what was called SBAC, it was a whole separate day. Like kids took all their test questions and then day two, it was nothing but like a writing prompt. Like you read something and you responded to it. Um, <clears throat> what happened, the first year they launched BCAP, and this is kind of a little bit of what James is talking about, is they put it at the tail end of one of the sessions, so it just was different depending on the kiddo. And kiddos would hit next, and it would exit on completely out of the test. And they couldn't unlock tests quick enough for kids to go back in. Oh, yeah. So they didn't um, factor it into a scale score. This year, it is factored in or last springs where this factor in. So that is a little different. We're just not sure how that plays out because we haven't used this long enough to know. Um, questions? It's a lot. <laughs> um, our curriculum for English language arts and mathematics uh, continue to be the same. Um, what we're doing and what we're using to accelerate the Learning for our students, 
So this is we're continuing on what we build on bridges and yes. infrastructure construction. Right. And right. I would say the only thing that's different in that is just teacher turnover, right? So it takes uh, a little more wraparound support. We've been leveraging our interventionists to help those new folks get launched because sometimes it's it's different when you're teaching multi-age, like yes. especially in math, right? It is two very different expectations. Mm -hmm. So we're using people like Bonnie Horn, our mathematics coach, Ace Everett's help, and then both our literacy interventionists, Linda General and Donna Gallant, are helping those folks really get going to reading is very much they test into a specific lesson number and they go. So it doesn't matter about age, whereas math it's kind of two separate things. Um, and that I would say continues to become the challenge scheduling wise is like is balancing to make sure everybody has enough time, but that we're doing more than just going to math class and just going to literacy class. Because you can spend all day in those. Um, you can use a lot of times if <laughs> 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 that were the case. Um, but that that's kind of, especially in the multi-age math class, where we're really starting to juggle and figure out when it comes to the experience. But, Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? All right. Turn it over to Tara. Okay, well, let's move on to our business manager, Tara, please. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. All right. I have sent you my report. It outlines what's happening in the business office throughout the month of October. It's a busy reporting month because all of our uh, quarter one reports are due generally by the 15th of the month. So we do each of these reports other than the special education reports for all seven of our entities. And then updates that aren't on my report and also a reminder is any board members and treasurer stipends a paperwork has been received will get paid out this friday in payroll and then lastly um i think i shared at the su board meeting uh the auditors were with us uh for two weeks and now they are doing their wrap up of their reconciliation on their end and then they will be back to do the federal single audits for any of our entities that received over 750,000 of federal funding. And then if there's any questions. Okay, go ahead, Yeah, hi, Tara. Um, just curious, are you, you got 13 items, bullets here, and I'm sure you got a lot more going on. It, has the state and feds, uh, uh, auditing and reporting requirements basically leveled off as far as what you expect so it's steady state or are you still juggling with with new demands or new requirements or different things uh, how's that whole process that you're supervising going is it pretty steady state now or is there new surprises all the time um, none of my reports are the same from year to year. They ask for new information every time a report gets rolled out. We have all new formats for all of our special education reports, as well as continuing to have to do supplemental reports for all the additional funding that we received as a result of the ESSER grant. Uh, so no, it is not the same. It hasn't been the same in the five years I've been doing this, one year after another. Oh my goodness. That's Does it keep you up at night? It's one of the things that keeps me up at night, yes. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so is there any other questions for Tara? Okay. Thank you, Tara. Um, policy committee, second reading of policies B5 and C12. I'll have to have Jamie fill you in on that because I've missed the last couple because of soccer. I think he's at Okay. Okay, well, then we're going to go ahead and put a pin in this and circle back when um, Jamie is able to read attend our meeting. 
Uh, so uh, we had to table the celebration of learning until next meeting due to um, soccer game. <laughs> Uh, so, 8.1, first draft of the student support budget. Yeah, so you'll see the draft, the chair so nicely put together with numbers. I just say FTEs in the chair. There's a couple differences that will change. One of the things that we really uh, worked on our partnership with Fred Martin is we have a behavior specialist who um, has been working with us almost a month now um, and really focuses on implementation of targeted supports so a kid who might need a check-in check-out plan as well as preventative things and um, so we've added to keep this this kind of came about because I wasn't able to fill the um, school counselor position and it's it's working well from a standpoint of like who's opposite of me when I'm in one place versus the other um, to provide support for staff and students. So that's an addition, and you'll see what we did is decrease the guidance counselor position from one full-time person to 0.6 FTE, which essentially is three days a week. That person would still come in and run some social groups, uh, school counseling classes, like preventative things. Um, but that's kind of a big, the biggest difference in some switches. We have been working with a school-based clinician who's been ex extremely successful as well um, with some of our students uh, who need additional wraparound supports. So we've previously used um, SRM or other funds to post that position. Yeah. So then we're adding it in. The behavior specialist is um, one person in both the schools mm -hmm. and uh, how many days? Hours. Three in Rochester and two in Stockbridge. Because they are here um, all week. Yeah, right? all mm -hmm. week. Um, uh, uh, that you did bring up a very good question. Uh, what does that look at like at an elementary level? Yep, it's a lot of focusing on preventative things as well as awareness of what we call it zones of regulation. When I'm feeling in the red, which might be mad or angry, what does my body do? What do my words do? What do my hands do? Um, are all examples and working through that. Uh, that's just one example. We also go through the green zone, which is like calm and our baseline. What does that look like? So a lot of awareness of like your own feelings and what that looks like for you and being able to use your words to explain them for different strategies, right? Like uh, different breathing techniques or things to do when you are not in the green zone, when you might be upset. Mm -hmm. That's one, just one component. It's a large component, but it's one component. Also bullying prevention, uh, friendship groups, helping kids with what we call pro-social skills, right? Mm -hmm. Positive ways to interact with each other, um, which is, I mean, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah, right? And then my my favorite is uh, I'm being sarcastic. But when kids joke to be funny, but it's at someone's expense and it pokes and it pokes and it pokes, Perfect. they think they're being funny and it's friends. And this is what friends do. That's not reality, as everybody in this room and on the computer knows but having to take the time to work through that. Um, and then like, we call them lunch lunches for different groups of kiddos who, who just want to learn or we've identified need like different connections, mm -hmm. right? how to make friends, what that looks like. Okay, mm -hmm. and, how to, and that differs from the behavior specialist because they focus on... More targeted interventions for kiddos who need supports and need more and expe yeah. expectations. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I've interrupted you. No. Through. I figured. So that was the biggest um, difference between uh, last year's budget and what we're proposing for next year. What we're proposing. Um, everything else is pretty much status quo. I haven't changed a lot, other than I would say. One point we decreased the nurse to 0 0.8, 
Uh, I'd like to keep that at 1.0. We have a lot of families who need help with a lot of things around the medical area, especially without a pediatrician close in five, as well as um, it just puts pressure on the two admin assistants to have to fill in as the nurse. Um, Jamie, did you have any update on you? I know you had started conversations around having a, a nurse practitioner. Yeah, a nurse practitioner or a pediatric, pediatric nurse a doctor that maybe there was some interest in coming into our area or school. Yeah, so I have um, a meeting already scheduled for when I return with Gifford, and I do have a phone call tomorrow. Um, with Gifford's board chair, which is Vic, uh, to continue those uh, forward moving conversations. So Gifford appeared to be very supportive of the idea of having a pediatrician um, be able to serve our students located within our, within our actual school um, two afternoons a week, which would be great. Um, We've had a long-standing partnership with Health Hub, which has been affiliated with um, the pediatrician's office in South Royalton, which was Becky Folk. Some of you um, may know that name. Becky was a long-standing pediatrician in South Royalton. Her, her business uh, supported this nonprofit Health Hub and provided uh, pediatric care for a number of years to the schools within the Orange Windsor Supervisory Union. We've also been able to expand out to Bethel. The problem we've had is that that health office has been struggling to keep a permanent um, PA in place. And so we've not been having the level of medical care that we were hoping to have. I know they plan to bring someone on in January, but I also remain very concerned about the lack of pediatric care in the Valley. Um, and that's where I think Gifford could help us. So stay tuned. I think in November, I'll be able to say, this is what it's really looking like, but I'm feeling quite optimistic. And this would occur without any added cost to the district. It would be exciting. So stay tuned. Yeah, great. Thank you very much for that update. That would be exciting. So we, we did add for you uh, this year. We used to add at each draft. We'd keep track of what the percentage increase was. We wanted you to be able to look and at least have an estimate based on last year's impact of a penny on the tax rate. So what you're seeing is the FY25 penny on a tax rate. Each year it adjusts usually a little bit. And so in December, we'll be able to tell you exactly what we estimate a penny to be for next year, but we at least wanted to provide you what a penny was last year. So right now with those changes, Lindy went over with you, the tax impact projection would be just over two cents on the tax rate. Okay. Great. Other things oh, and the other thing I don't know if we went into, we are carrying... Um, so estimate the estimated contract uh, teacher contract negotiation increases are currently in these budget figures, but I also think it's important for the board to know we're carrying right now an 18 percent increase that's estimated on health insurance cost. We'll get those hopefully in the next month exactly what they're going to settle on in regards to um, health insurance increases. Hopefully we're on the higher end of that and it's less than 18%, but no, that's the number in there right now. And we're covering a 5% increase uh, estimate on the Delta, uh, Delta dental um, uh, dental insurance plan. So know that that will keep updating you each month as those numbers adjust, but um, that's, that's the percentages that are in there right now in regards to health insurance. Uh, yeah. Thank you for laying that right out for us though. Um, great. Uh, the other uh, changes? I'll just speak to you. Yep. Uh, so under principal and admin, um, currently neither admin assistant is year-round. They're extended year contract. Uh, this puts uh, one of those positions to year-round. Or finding is um, there's enough that one could be year-round and the other can stay on next. Year, year, which is like 10 days before the school year starts and 10 days after it ends. So it kind of gets like July, essentially off in a little bit of August. Um, 
intervention that includes our math interventionist and our literacy interventionist. Spoke to I spoke to nurse uh, regular ed pairs us just at so two of those para educators are preschool para educators and that's a licensing requirement that like when you have more than ten you have to have two adults which is good need. <laughs> and then um, one of those is in our um, classrooms in Rochester. So it's just based on actual. Yeah, okay. uh, Sadness, this is based on what we used last year. We use less than substitutes, which is a good sign. Um, so I'm confident to knock that down. And then I spoke to school based clinician and very right. specialist. I think that's everybody right. in that bucket. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's part. Okay, um, does anybody have any more questions or comments? Um, yes, please. A question both from Jamie and Lindy, and, and that is um, we had COVID, we had all the distress and all the conflict and all the difficulties of getting through that, and for both staff and parents and families and kids. And um, are we coming out of that? Or, or it, it's, it's basically we've got other social emotional challenges that we have to meet. It's, what does that horizon look like to you? Is it, are we, uh, we've got the guns and the talent to, to meet and um, those things are finally kind of settling down or is it just each year has a bunch of new challenges and we don't know what they are and they can be better or worse. Give us some sense of how this is going. Um, Lindy can jump in. I mean, Bill, I'll speak to you as a district, but also across the SU. I, I, we continue to see increases of social emotional need uh, mm -hmm. and mal maladaptive behavior um, across multiple districts within the supervisory union. I will say that Claire Martin has been a really good partner um, in working really hard to continue to implement and intensify supports within our schools. Um, and, you know, I would say that right now as a district, if you had that uh, school counselor position filled at least part time, because we went ahead and, and, you know, filled as much as we could around missing supports with that behavioral specialist contract, that I think that we'd be finding that we had a uh, as solid as a team in social emotional support um, as one as one could really expect. I think we we'd feel good. I would say one of the gaps Lindy still has is not having that school counselor. Um, and so one of the things that we have been doing is well, one, we went ahead and, and contracted with Claire Martin for the behavioral specialist, but two central office continues to work with Lindy to provide additional coverage to at schools um, when they're feeling a bit thin due to student need. Um, yeah. So what, what does that mean? That means central office administrators pushing into schools to help provide additional backup support. Thank you. Yeah, I think I would just add, I think every time we think we've planned for the right supports, a new family moves in, a new need arises. I don't think we're alone in that experience. Um, but I also feel like we have a strong team. The school counselor position is definitely the additional support is important because it creates a more preventative approach, right? And not always responsive. And teaching social skills. And as much as I'd like to say, that I could do that as well. That's just not realistic. And I'd like to get to that point, but we're just not there. Um, I think all things being said, where our kids with the highest need have the most individualized support right now, which is important because not everybody across the state can say that. Um, so that feels good. Uh, I think this behavior specialist enjoyed this position coming on because I think that feels good for teachers to know that there's someone to be able to respond if I'm not available. Um, and that's really important. And I think schools are always a microcosm of what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, mental health is a real thing that's going on. And 
here we are trying to support kids. Mm -hmm. And what actually is really nice about Fairmark coming in in these positions is that they're backed by a whole network of that it, that specializes in social support. Yeah. yeah, they they have all the resources that they can draw on, uh, which just strengthens what yeah, yeah for us. So yeah. great. Um, any more questions on this first draft of the uh, the budget? Well, this is definitely the important stuff. <laughs> so um, I think we all know that it is going to be a tough budget year, so we definitely want to do it as prudently as possible. But this stuff is is important, and we need to make sure that we're able to fund our staff and the supports that our kids need. Okay. So if there's no further questions about the first draft, we will move on to 8.2. Uh, task force to survey stakeholder groups throughout the Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. We had put a pin in the policy committee because uh, Jamie was um, attending another meeting. Now that he is back, we would have him speak to the two policies that have been presented in front of us. Yes, so um, you have policy B5 and C12. Uh, the prior draft of B5 was the attempt of the board back in 18. Um, prior to really regs coming out um, in regards to uh, Title IX via the Trump administration and procedures trying to address Title IX uh, in a policy that uh, essentially was going to be serving students, employees, third parties, contracted services. And so this is a policy now C12 that is uh, specific to uh, sexual harassment as defined uh, via uh, statute of Title IX, um, which is a basis of sex. Um, and so this policy came to us directly from uh, Vermont School Board and Trust and Insurance Trust lawyers, uh, Lynn and Lynn, Heather and Pietro Lynn joined the policy committee to walk through the policy committee on why that policy was written the way it was, but also why it's frankly so dense. Um, and there are new um, procedures that just came out uh, in June from the Biden administration. Those procedures have been caught up in the courts because it was broadening the definition of sexual harassment um, via Title IX to be broader than the basis of sex. Um, and so those those regs have been challenged. So our attorney recommended that at this point, until those things uh, get worked out in the courts, um, that we move forward with adopting this po policy that's currently aligned to the 2020 regs and that um, he expects, they expect that with over the next year, um, that they, and the fact that we're going to have um, a presidential election coming, that they expected um, some changes to the procedures possibly anyways, and so that we should adopt what's not currently caught up in the court so that we have a Title IX policy on the books. Uh, so that C-12 B-5 is, uh, addresses uh, workplace harassment. Um, and also provides protections for parties that is broader than just uh, harassment based on sex that's covered under Title IX, other protected um, groups, as well as I just think it's important that the board knows that we have an HHB policy as well, hazing, harassment, and bullying, bullying policy that provides protections to our students in the event that it's something, our harassment that's occurred that's not linked to sex which would be uh, covered under Title IX. Okay, do we have any questions about or comments on these policies? This is the second reading we have. One more reading and then we vote on our next. I'm gonna warn these for adoption at the full board um, in October, Amy, and warn them for you guys uh, for 
November, it would be important for us to make certain that we get these policies updated. Like our current B5 is really not a legal policy. Um, so I, I'm feeling a bit, um, I'm feeling ur- that it's a, it's pretty urgent now that we have students back in our buildings to get these get these policies adopted next month. Okay. Uh, great, so does anybody have any comments or concerns uh, regarding either of these policies at this time? I would say, um, if not, uh, read through them though, and um, I'll reach out to the policy committee, right? They have, or to uh, Jamie if they find anything egregious. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Jamie. We'll uh, have those warm for our next meeting in November. Okay, 8.2, a task force to survey task force to survey stakeholder groups throughout RSUD to inform next steps in our said strategic planning. Um, this was a, a topic of discussion that we had at our um, board retreat of uh, the idea of uh, uh, moving forward with um, strategic planning but looking to really engage the community and um, in that uh, in that uh, planning process um, to just have an understanding of of you know of our community our stakeholders um, our 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 side community and our broader community of um, sending schools um, sending students um, I do, does anybody have any um, discussion on this at this point? Um, we, a uh, motion, an idea for a motion went around. Uh, we did, we're asking for membership uh, from uh, Stockbridge Parent Guardian, Rochester Parent Guardian, Hancock Granville, uh, our tuition districts, um, a parent guardian. So that would be um, three of the members of this task force. Uh, uh, two other general community members, uh, two teachers, the principal, and uh, two board members. Um, the idea again would be for this uh, task force to um, engage the community with the survey uh, and to summarize that survey and just and to prepare a report for the board. It wouldn't be the the task of this um, task force would not be to evaluate the results and to make recommendations to the board. It would be to gather the information, create the survey, gather the information, and report the, the information back to the board. So I think we're uh, are we all in agreement in the um, scope of of what we're trying to do here with the task force? Okay. Um, great. Well, I would like to go ahead and uh, make a motion to create this task force. So, so move. Second. I'll read it. Uh, um, I would like to, if you notice two. that I uh, just wanted to have the, the that summarize, I just want to replace the, that word in your motion. Replace the what? The, um, just, I think you just had it here. Take that out the summons. Yeah. 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 I'd like to move the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District Board form a community engagement task force to survey the unified district stakeholder groups and summarize the results and report to the board in preparation for its, and its meaning the board's um, development of a, of a strategic plan. And the membership of this task force that uh, we've identified would be three parents, guardians from Stockbridge, Rochester, and the Granville Hancock Tuition District, two community members, two teachers, our principal, and two board members. Uh, 
Also be included would be task force support team, and that would be made up of a task force facilitator and the uh, SU community school coordinator. So we're talking about 10 members and two members of the support team. So I shall move. I second. Excellent. The motion has been moved. Uh, is there any further discussion? Patrick. <clears throat> Should we have a community member from Pittsfield or no? Well, we do have a spot because we do have um, a two, we're looking for two general community members. So uh, that definitely would give them a spot there. Okay. Well, is there any further questions? Great, there's been a motion and a second. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Hi. Excellent. Um, do we have, uh, at this time, do we have any um, commitments to membership? Uh, yep. We have some parents who are committed. Uh, the definites right now are Dakota Stender from Granville, Hampton. Uh, Doug Fole from Stockbridge, and the others we're waiting for DJ, so I'll confirm. Okay. Well, then that's great. Um, then, uh, do we have at this time? Um, JC is not here. I'd love to make sure that uh, like more of our board here to. Don't we just nominate the board members? Not until. Oh, you go to the meeting. I guess you all oh, volunteer. Oh, that's good. What we call it. I know. <laughs> um, okay, uh, I guess by next meeting we should we can finalize who the uh, the members are going to be for this task force, so then they can go forward. Um, and so with this task force, uh, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking if we could finalize the membership on the fourth. And then we could go ahead and get a meeting warned that following week, possibly, to get started. That's sort of what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, that sounds great. So. Does that work? Okay. I think that sounds great. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, 8.3 for development. Did anybody have anything to bring forth for board development series? There, there was a reading in your packet on Robert's rules for small boards. Ah, okay. I don't know if folks read it or not, but. No, but I need to get a copy of the. Oh, a book of the of the book. I do have one. Um. Okay. Robert's rules for small for, for small boards. Yeah, I'm not sure which edition it is. Uh, the cover does not look like that. You know, this is something that we adopted yeah. several years ago. It, it makes it less bureaucratic and kind of stilted allows us to um, do what's right or procedural not get, I think turn up a notch, for instance, not the, the chair doesn't have to stand up. Right. And the chair can participate in the in the discussions that we're having. And I think um, I think we all need to hear from maybe um, whatever right. we're talking about. So I found that um, very 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 helpful. Um, so it's a little less bureaucratic. As the end result um, is, we're going to do things, have the right decisions, but also procedurally do things that are are consistent with Robert rules. It's um, very important to have that structure in place when um, topics he he died. Absolutely. Out. I suggested to the, the, the a rather innocuous uh, 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 committee, the budget and finance committee, that hey, we need to put in some more places for public communications and comments, but also limited to three minutes because 
you know, he, we don't have uh, humidity um, uh, show up until things are contentious. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. So you, you, you don't want to shut them off, but you want to give them opportunity, multiple opportunities, but also with I think one thing came out of the retreat was that uh, on the board of development that we open that up to the board members. And my suggestion to the chair would be is uh, like tonight we say somebody wants to suggest a board development topic that we'd like to spend a few minutes on. Uh, and it could be a, a topic or an article or something like that. It could be a policy that we're kind of curious about and we need more. Information about we've got policy books like that, and uh, so I'm not saying I thought this was a good place to start, but I would recommend that we open it up and somebody have a suggestion that we should uh, tackle in a brief but important dialogue uh, for delivery. I definitely agree, um, and I think that along with that, if there is no suggestions, I think we should be on a rotating. Um, oh, okay. Assignment to come up with ah, something. Okay. Um, so, does anybody have a suggestion for our November board meeting um, as a board development series to have a uh, small read or um, small discussion on uh, um, some type of board development? Anything more specific you'd like to know more about, or? Okay. Do you want to talk with the first topic for next time? Uh, okay. Um, now, Bill, unless you have something on your mind that you would like to bring up next month, I can try to come up with something that is of interest. Because I have things, I just can't, can't think of right now. That are, like, um, things yeah. that I would like to know more about. You're too young to be Part of it might be the, uh, I have the results of our, uh, we took a self-evaluation of oh, yeah. the truth. That's, uh, that's the next um, topic, and then uh, those results, uh, we might, I, I've got the handouts, and I can send them by email, but uh, for both our evaluations of how well we did and our goal accomplishments, goal accomplishments for uh, 2024 as well as our um, consistent um, practice of our belief in our educational governance principles and our protocols. And I think I've got those results which I can pass out, but since we don't have a lot of people here. I think we might want to have that could be a development. I think that's a great start. For, Good. Uh, for November, um, the, the, uh, we can make any decisions, but at the retreat, uh, um, Justine and I volunteered that we work together uh, to draft a board goals for this uh, fiscal year um, that we haven't been able to get on that yet. I would be hopeful that. That we can put some in the bones on that for the next November evening. I think that sounds uh, like a really good plan. Okay. Um, so then, uh, eight point four. That's what we were just talking about, right? So we'll be um, you'll be sending that information to us. And uh, we will uh, review it and, and um, discuss it at our next meeting. Then. Sounds great. Okay. Uh, Ten new hires on the resignation. Yes. Uh, our regular Ed Para Kim Trenholm has decided um, that her family is scheduled better to just be a substitute for us. Mm -hmm. So we are currently looking for a uh, general education para to serve in our one two classroom in Rochester. Um, so that would be the only change this time. Okay, uh, 
uh, is there any public comment? Okay, seeing no one, but no public on. Our next regular board meeting is going to be Monday, November 4th at 6 p.m. at the Rochester campus. Uh, this time, is there any future agenda items that we'd like to put on? Um, I just, stuff that was noted tonight was the um, far, the farm to school and forest to school groups. Okay, what do we want? What is it called? Farm, farm to school and forest to school. Yeah. Now, is that is the name of one group? Yes, no, it's a uh, good question. Uh, maybe we should do a farm and forest to school. Sure. Or something like that. Like, talk <laughs> about it. It's good. It's just simplifying so their name because it does almost feel that that could be too, too, too absolutely like split. Um, so we'll put those on as a regular uh, tracker. We will uh, uh, identify and solidify our task force members and um, hopefully be able to work meeting for that task force after that. So, okay. Uh, there's no further business. I look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Jamie. Yes, thank you.